DigiKey and Adafruit present on MPI. All right, this week is from Murata Power Solutions, Lady Ada. Yes, what is Murata. Okay, product of the week? I'm going to take you on a journey. This is going to be a great INPI. You're going to learn all sorts of stuff that you didn't expect uh, to learn about. So this week's INPI is for the MHM series of ionizer modules from Murata. Uh, these are chassis mount ionizers and ozone generators. Um, okay, so this is what it looks like. Uh, it basically it's got this little, the blue thing is like the actual like ionizer I guess it's got like some ceramic or something that will actually generate the ions and then the PCB you know this the high voltage PCB it's got uh, you know a high voltage power supply with it looks like um, I guess flyback transformer and all the all the control circuitry um, to, to generate it and you basically just plug in 12 volts and like boom uh, you get ions out which is awesome this is part of the Ionissimo, which sounds like a character in, in some cool opera that um, really likes capacitors, maybe. Um, and uh, basically, they have ionizers and ozonizers. Uh, we're going to talk about the ionizer, but this is part of the, They have a series of boards, and they all look, uh, as you see, kind of similar. Um, so the MHM series, uh, they've got these really lovely data sheets. Um, and yeah, I mean, like, here's the thing. It's actually kind of easy to use. You just plug in the power. Um, there's a monitoring pin as well if you need like a feedback loop to make sure it's on and the high voltage is being generated. Um, and uh, you get about 5 uh, million ions per cubic centimeter, uh, typical. Uh, and you have um, ozone and it's either like 0.6 milligram um, or like 0.16. There's also one that does negative ion, one does positive ions. There's three. There's three different ones in this series, and so um, you'll like. They all look identical. So to really tell which one you have, be sure to open up the data sheet and then look at the negative ion amount and the ozone amount because that's what's going to vary. Even though um, mechanically they are um, like the same size. Um, okay. So yeah, usage is really easy. Uh, there's a V monitoring pin, uh, gives you 2.5 volts out, and lets you know that it's, you know, the high voltage is being generated. Because it's high voltage, it's like 200 volts or something, or who knows what, like some some very high amount. It says, there's a fuse here that says 250 volt 1 amp, so I'm assuming it's it's about that high. Um, but that's that's the dangerous part, so just don't uh, touch the bottom, um, and, uh, you know, keep the high voltage part away from uh, your chassis, and of course, uh, earth ground your chassis if you want to use this. Um, what I thought was interesting is uh, they released a few months ago a press release about using these ionizer modules um, to deactivate uh, SARS-CoV-2, uh, otherwise known as the coronavirus. Um, and um, it's a, it was a scientific experiment. It was a, you know, a lab-based experiment that they worked with a um, university to do. So they have the, some papers with graphs showing how you know, the purple is the control. And then if you have um, a lot of ozone, um, it will uh, deactivate the virus. I guess this is like a, a well-known thing. Ionizers tend to be used for like air freshening, uh, uh, static removal, um, you know, disinfection and stuff. So they just sort of showed like, yes, the, you know, in a lab, uh, the, you know, COVID virus gets deactivated when you blast with ozone. Now, how this actually applies to real life, you know, would you use this to maybe make like a, a, a mask uh uh, sanitizer. Um, you'll have to do your own experiments to, you know, make sure that what you're doing, what you're using this ionizer for is actually doing what you expect. Um, so I, just, I would like to keep, make sure people keep that in mind, that this is just a lab study. It wasn't a, like, in real reality, like, you know, everyday use study, which is, can be different. Um, that said, for scientists and engineers who want to, like, generate a bunch of ions or ozone, this is, like, the cheapest way to do it. Like, compared to the other modules, this is, like, you know, a half or tenth of the price of other ionizer modules. It's really easy to use. It's really cheap. So, like, definitely scientists and engineers who want to get some ions going, positive or negative, this is your jam. Okay, so now I went to the Murata website. You're like, why? What's this comic book? I went to the Murata website, and I click about the company because I, I usually read a little bit about the company. And they've got this awesome manga that they wrote, um, and it's available in Japanese, English, and uh, Mandarin. Um, and it tells you like the history of the company and like the ceramic capacitors that they made and like how this guy invented them by going to university and studying really hard. And it's like, it's a, look, there's like ceramic capacitors with like manga lines on them. Uh, how can you not love it? Uh, check out this um, 
this comic book, it's free off the, the Murata website. Uh, I thought that was just charming. Uh, I, way better than, like, a, a boring PowerPoint, for sure. Um, it's better than one of the Justice Leagues I read. That's true. Okay. <laughs> We're going to get the Zack Snyder cut of the uh, Murata Capacitor manga soon. Um, next up, uh, they also were one of the companies. This is like, Phil, you talked to me about this, like, you know, 10-ish years ago, a lot of Japanese companies started making their own robots. Um, yeah. So they made a robot, and their robot was like a humanoid that would ride a bicycle. This isn't actually that tall. I think this is like maybe like a foot tall, so it's not like human size. But um, it used Murata sensors and, and you know wireless modules and motor controllers uh, to make like a little robot that could um, ride a bicycle back and forth. And here's another cool thing: it can balance on the bicycle, so it's like not moving here, and it can balance like side to side, which is like pretty yeah. impressive. Um, check out the video. Yeah, there was um, Sony that had Curio, and then um, Honda had Asimov, yeah. and um, then there was a whole slew of others, and it was this humanoid robot race to figure out who could have like kind of the most interesting demo and then festo came along and they had these more organic ones and you haven't really seen it it was like a a humanoid robotic competition worldwide unsaid and then later on um with big dog and like atlas you've seen some of those as well yeah and this is just showing you they have a they have some uh, tutorials on on how it works too so they're inside there's like a flywheel and the flywheel um, helps it retain its balance. It's, look, it's not easy to make a balancing ball like, like this. So I'm impressed that they did it. And um, yeah, they, they have a couple of videos about uh, Murata Boy. And then if you're wondering, well, what about Murata Girl? We gotcha. There's also a unicycle uh, balancing robot. Same deal, it can balance on a single um, wheel. And it even has a uh, whole history, including a zodiac sign. I'm kind of surprised that there is no uh, like, you know, like blood type or whatever. I guess, a backstory. But, um, so check out these two robots. Uh, what I just thought is cool is that um, these are friendly, happy robots. These are robots that like to ride bicycles uh, and, and have fun. They are uh, not robot enemies. They are robot friends. So I'm, uh, I'm always a fan of that. So I, I thought that was cool, too. So check Over this out. But back to the ionizer. So you can pick these up from DigiKey. Again, there are three different kinds. Um, one is like positive high ozone, one is negative low ozone. There's a couple different kinds used for different purposes. Um, so, uh, you know, check out the data sheets to compare them. Um, uh, also check out the Ionissimo page on the Marauder website. Uh, there's also, DigiKey has a little uh, video. Um, we're not going to show that video. There's a different video that DigiKey has about these. Um, so you can watch that as well. And for like 30 bucks, you can have an ionizer tomorrow morning. Yeah. Chart URL code is digikey.com forward slash chart 433FP7. And the code is 490-14-864-ND. Yeah, let's and go to the overhead real fast, and then we'll go sure. watch the video. So I can just, I'll just show yeah, it. Yeah, the video doesn't have any sound, so you're going to have to talk over it anyways. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah. It was a, oh, you're right. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll, yeah, it has, like, text. Um, okay, so this is just the ionizer module. Uh, you know, I plugged it in, but like you, don't, you can't see anything. It just you, if you smell it, you're like, oh, that smells like ionizing ozone. Um, but power is here. You connect a JST uh, connector here, and I have the part number um, in the blog post. Um, it's also in the data sheet. And then this is a high voltage section, so yeah, do not touch this part. Uh, you would want to you know mount this um, off of your board. And then green, I believe, is earth ground uh, connected to this ground, and then this is the high voltage pin. And then um, inside here, you know what, actually, maybe I'll try to open this. I didn't think of that. But there is this little protector. And I guess, you know, I, I didn't quite read about this, but there's like a little wire. And I guess this is what the ions are flying off of, this little piece of metal here. There's like a very, very thin piece of metal. And then there's this, uh, I guess, a ceramic isolator or something. So um, interesting stuff. Uh, but, yeah, for 30 bucks, it's like, have your own ion generator. Why not? All right, so let's check out the video. Yeah, you might have to do a little narration. Yeah. There's... All right, Murata, innovator, electronics. So, yeah, they they basically released these, you know, they released these before uh, COVID came about. So they weren't originally uh, designing these for um, use with, like, viral deactivation. It was initially for, like, anti-static usage or for, um, I guess they're, they're used for anti-static usage in uh, uh, dryers, which is kind of cool idea. Uh, you say blast ions or ozone in. And um, they have the ionizer and they have ozonizers. So check out the ozonizer if you ever need those. We just talked about the ionizer. Oh, yeah, for 4.3 kilovolt. Sorry, did I say 250 volt? I meant 4.3 kilovolt. 
So yeah, definitely don't touch it. Um, yeah, and they're often used, I, I see them also in, um, people have like portable air fresheners. Um, they're used as well. Or like, you know, if you have smoke, um, like things, you, if you smoke, you have one of these and it removes the, the smoke from the air. So that's what these, prod, these uh, ionizers and ozonizers are good for. All right, and that is this week's... Why again? I'm on the PR.